So the next area that we're going to focus on is verbs. And we have two key areas for learning how to write with strong verbs. The first area, the first principle, you can remember by simply remembering verb and vicinity. Verb and vicinity. Let me write that up on the board. So in other words, here's what we mean by this. Subjects need to be close to the verbs that they are talking about. So in other words, subject close to its verb, big smiley face, right? Subjects and verbs, they like to be together. They like each other. They want to be together because they have a good, strong relationship. So you want to keep your subjects and your verbs together. Now the real reason that subjects and verbs need to be close together is because you more clearly state who's doing what. So let me give you an example of a really bad sentence where the subject is going to be really far from the verb and they're just not happy about it. Okay, now again, this is a guideline. This sentence right here isn't breaking any grammatical rules, but, but the guideline that we're going to give you is that remember, subjects and verbs should stay close together so that they're happy and strong, okay? So let me read this sentence. John, after submitting the proposal to Sally and Susan, asked Lisa for the numbers. Now, even though the sentence is okay, because my main subject is John, I'm going to underline it once, and my main verb is like five miles, 10,000 words over to ask, right? It takes me so long to get there. John da -da 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 asked Lisa for the numbers. This is problematic. John and the verb want to be together. That's when the relationship is most clear. You put too many words in there and you separate them and suddenly I've muddied up that relationship. So here in business language is why this is a problem. Okay, I am separating John and what he did by a bunch of words including three nouns, right? Three nouns, two of them, two of which are people. So in other words, by the time I get to who did the asking, I've had to wade through John, Sally, and Susan. And what happens sometimes when I've separated my subject from my verb too far apart, the problem then becomes that I've got words that confuse the reader into thinking, was it Sally or Susan? And I've got to backtrack, right, all the way back to find where that subject is. Now I remedy this because remember, happy face equals subject and verb together. I remedy this by putting my subject close to my verb. Yay! Now I've got a happy sentence because the subject and the verb are close together where they're supposed to be. After submitting the proposal to Sally and Susan, John asked Lisa for the numbers. So I can put all that information right at the beginning as long as I keep my subject and my verb together. Clear writing, no question who did what, that it was John that did the asking. Now sometimes we do have information that separates the subject and the verb. That's okay. We just don't want to make it too long. Let me give you an example. Okay, so now I've got a very short interruptive phrase, my fiance, because that's important. I want to tell you that John is my fiance. He's really not. I'm really not engaged. Just pointing that out. But John, my fiance, asked Lisa for the numbers. So this short of an interruptive phrase that's describing the subject in some way, my verb doesn't have a problem with it, especially if it's something that's really important or helpful to understanding something more about the subject. So when you're thinking about this guideline, remember, verb vicinity. Keep your subject close to your verb and you'll have a happy sentence. 